viewers of Biotechnica, welcome to another video. So today in this video, I'll be talking about CSAR net examination. Why you have to write the CSAR net examination? What is the purpose? How is the CSAR net examination is going to be? When is the CSIR net examination going to be and everything in detail. So let's talk about this topic in detail. So let's get started to the video. Hello everyone, this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So let us talk about the complete detail of CSIR net examination. First question is, what is this CSIR UGC net examination going to be? CSIR net examination is going to be a national level examination, which is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research National Eligibility Test. And this examination is conducted in India. I'll be talking about the eligibility who can apply for it after your master's or whether you can apply after your bachelor's or who can apply. I'll also be talking. So this examination very specifically conducted in India. Now the next question comes for us is why this CSIR UGC net is important or what is this purpose of the CSIR net examination? As we know CSIR net examination if you're going to write you can either become a junior research fellow or you can become a professor in a college. So if you want to become a junior research fellow you have to write JRF and CSIR net LS is for becoming a professor or a lecturer in a college or university. As a junior research fellow you will be getting rupees 31,000 per month plus your house rent allowances. It depends according to the cities that you're going to live and after two years of experience working as a JRF in a laboratory you can become a SRF with a stipend of rupees 35,000 with HRA. And you can also pursue your PhD using this uh, CSAR examination because most of the research institutions, uh, either in CSAR, DBT, ICMR, uh, usually uh, ask for the candidate who have a valid fellowships like CSAR net examination. So you can also pursue your PhD after qualifying CSAR net examination. And then you can also become a professor in a college or university. Now, the most important question might be coming for everybody is when is this CSIR net examination going to be conducted? So I, I'm going to tell you that it is believed that or it is just thought it will be happening after uh, three months of time might be in the January end or might be in the February. We just have to wait for the CSIR announcement. So we'll get to know when is the CSAR net examination going to be conducted. So we'll just wait for the notification and let's talk about it. The next one, who can apply for this examination? The most important thing, if you're belonging to a general category or if you're belonging to a general economically weaker section or OBC, then I'm going to talk for you. So if you're belonging to any of these categories, like if you have completed your MSc or integrated BS or MS or BS four years or BE or BTEC or B Pharma or MBBS in life sciences, any of the life sciences, then definitely you can go for it. And for general category, if you're belonging to any of these qualified examination, you need to have almost 55 percentage of your mark in these qualifications. So that's the most important thing about general category. And for candidates who are belonging to SC or ST and person with disability, and if you're belonging to any of these things like MSc, integrated BS, MS, BS four years, or BE or BTEC or B Pharma or MBBS, whether a person with disability or STSC, then you need to have 50 percentage of your marks. This is most important. So make sure you have 50 percentage of your marks in your graduation. Suppose if you are a candidate who have just enrolled for MSc or you are in your second year of your MSc in life sciences like uh, biotechnology or microbiology or any of these things, you are also eligible to apply for this CSAR net examination, but you have to apply in result awaited category. So this is the most important thing that you have to take into consideration. The next important thing is if you're belonging to BSc honors or if you have enrolled in an integrated PhD, BSc and integrated PhD, if you have enrolled, then you can also apply for this CSAR net examination. The next comes the age limit. So what about the age limit? As we know that if you want to become a researcher, the upper age limit is definitely going to be 28 years. I'll be talking about some relaxation also. 
If you want to become a professor, you can write CSAR UGC LS where there is no upper age limit. So this is the age limit, but there are some relaxation which is given. Five years relaxations are given to certain people like people who are belonging to ESC, ST, OBC, female applicants and person with disability. If you're belonging to any of these category, 28 plus five years you can write. So you can just think about it and start writing your examination. Suppose if you're belonging to OBC applicants, which is non-creamy layer, whose income is less, then you can also have a relaxation of three years, like 28, 29, 30, 31 years till that period, you can write this examination. So this is all about who can apply for this CSAR net examination. The next comes, how is this CSAR net examination life science going to be? So I'm going to talk about the patterns and what are the units, part A and part B, everything in detail. So first let's talk about the pattern of the test. So how is this pattern of CSAR net life science going to be? So totally there's going to be 145 questions and you have to answer only 75 questions. And there are going to be very specifically three sections, part A, part B and part C. In part A, you're going to have 20 questions and you have to answer 15 questions only. So 15 into 20 for every correct answer, you have two marks. So total marks comes around 30 marks. And part B, there are going to be 50 questions, but you have to answer only 35 questions. Correct answers are going to be two marks. So totally you'll get 70 marks. And for part C, there are 75 questions. You have to answer only 25 questions and every correct answer, there is going to be four marks and total comes around 100 marks. There is also going to be a negative marking in CSAR net examination and the total marks is definitely going to be 200 marks for it. So if you're able to score more than uh, 100, 150 marks above, then you are on the safer side. Now let's talk about what is this part A. Yes, part A is going to be an aptitude sections. So where you have to concentrate on certain things like work, time and displacement, probability, blood relation questions, graphical analysis, Venn diagram, alphabet series, nonverbal, number of series, statistics and mensuration, basic geometry, logical reasoning, profit and loss, permutation and combination, data interpretations. These are some of the things that usually come in the repeated uh, previous year question paper. So you can just look on to these uh, topics and you can prepare for your aptitude examination. So look around this. If you are able to score 30 marks are there. So if you're able to score almost 20 marks above, it's definitely going to be a booster marks for you. This is all about part A. The next comes part B. Part B is definitely going to be a subjective based one. So here you will be talking about total units are going to be 13 units. So we'll be talking about life sciences. So there are totally going to be 13 units. And I'll be talking about which units are going to have direct questions, which units you can skip, which units you should not skip. So the scoring units are going to be or the direct questions usually come from certain units like unit number two, uh, unit number four, cell communication and cell signaling, developmental biology, plant physiology, diversity of life forms, ecology, evolution. These units usually have direct questions. So if you are going to check your previous year question paper, you can see literally direct questions. If you know the concept, you can literally write these uh, examinations very fine in your part B things. Then the next thing comes is do not skip. What are the units that you should not skip? So units that shouldn't be skipped. Out of this 13 units, if you are able to manage 9 to 10 units properly, you can literally clear these examinations. When you are starting your preparation, you need to know that certain units you should not skip, certain units you can skip. So these are some of the units that you should not skip at all. So unit number one, the most basic unit, molecules and their interaction relevant to biology. Unit number two, cellular organization, very basic unit for anything that you're going to study. And unit number three, fundamental processes, definitely. And unit number four, cell communication and cell signaling. And unit number six. So you can do unit number six if you're belonging to a botany candidate or if you're belonging to a zoology, then you can go off for unit number seven. So unit number six or unit number seven, you can say unit number eight is inheritance biology. Almost 
most questions comes from this and unit number 13 which is methods in biology so these are the units we should never ever skip when you start your preparation or when you're preparing for this and you can also follow some previous year question paper when you are actually starting for your preparations the next important thing is units that can be skipped. What are the units that you can skip? As I already told you, there are 13 units. You don't have to study all the 13 units. If you were able to concentrate like nine to 10 units, you're far enough to clear these examinations. So what are the units that can be skipped? Yes, you can also skip unit number seven. Suppose if you're taking unit number six, plant physiology, you can skip unit number seven, but usually you will get a very basic question, which if you are able to answer, you can answer it. Unit number nine, you can also skip diversity of life form. Unit number 12, applied biology, you can also skip this unit, but this units which shouldn't be skipped, you should never skip at all. Okay, the next question is the most easiest way of studying any unit. You almost have like nine units. How you can study is always take up a units that is going to be correlated with each other. So I'll be talking about what are the unit that you need to study together because in examination, they are going to ask questions which are related to both the units. So the first is going to be unit number two and unit number four. So when you're studying unit number two, always study unit number four together. And unit number five, very specially developmental biology in plants I'm talking about. And unit number six, plant physiology. So when you're studying developmental biology in plants, study along with that unit number six because when you study a plant hormone, there is a correlation with the developmental biology, shoot apical meristems, root apical meristems. So it's very good enough that you study unit number five plant physiology, plant along with the plant physiology. The next come unit number 10 and unit number 11, you can study together. And this is unit number 12 and unit number 13, you can actually study it together. So these are the units that you can study together. The next most important question is, is CSAR net life science examination is going to be tougher? How is this examination we have talked about like patterns, part A, part B, part C, what are the units to study? What are the units that you can skip? What are the units that you can correlate and study? What are the units that they will ask questions together? So now the question for us is how is the CSAR net life science exam going to be? Is it going to be tougher or is it going to be very easier? So I would suggest it depends on you very specially. Suppose if you're able to concentrate on nine units really well along if you have solved question, it's going to be medium to easier. But if it's not tough at all. So do not think when you're starting your preparation that CSAR net is going to be tougher for you. So the next important thing is reference book. Of course, you need to know all the reference book when you're going to start your preparation. So these are some of the reference book. If you're going to go in for biochemistry, white and white or Leninger, cell biology, cell signaling, of course, Bruce Alberts, you can go for it. Molecular biology by Watson and iGenetic by Rusel. Immunology, of course, QBA, you can go for. And developmental biology, Gilbert book. And plant physiology, Taze and Zigo. And animal physiology, Guyton. And genetics by Benjamin A. Pierce. And ecology by Peter Silence. And evolution by Mark Ridley. And the next one is methods in biology by Wilson and Walker. So if you want to take a screenshot, you can definitely go for it. So these are some of the standard books. If you would love to learn something more simplified, which the concepts are taken from the standard books, then definitely you can look for Biotechnica, Light, or you can go for the mind maps and what are the um, availability that we have. You can just look onto the stores and you can actually purchase that reference books too. The next most important question for everybody is, Yes, we know about what is this all about, when is the examination, who can apply, uh, how is the pattern going to be, everything is understood. But now the most important question for all of us is, is it possible for me to clear this examination? I'm going to tell you yes, if strategically approached. Yes, you need to know when you're going to start a preparation, you need to know what are the units to concentrate first, what are the units to be studied together. And you need to know how to clear this examination. You need to attempt a lot of question paper, mock tests, and you need to make a scheduled personalized plan for you. Definitely. If you're going to be very stringent of following your own plan, then nobody can stop you from clearing your examination. So make yourself strategically involved yourself 
and have a personalized plan exclusively for you and always stick on to the plan do not miss the plan that you have done for you and study units that are always correlated that's the most important thing and don't take tough units one after the other suppose if you're going to take any tough units initially and the second if you're going to take the next unit is also going to be tougher you might be discouraged so take some easier unit and then take some tougher units so simultaneously if you're going to go in that way you will feel like energized also so don't take tougher units one after the other and always have a smarter way of answering any question it might be any sort of a statement based questions if you're going to do or part c questions or part b questions or match the following questions always look for every option and always look for what the question talks about uh, are they talking about equal proportions are they talking about a uh, same or are they talking about more less everything you have to take into consideration and always go for the rejection me- method of rejecting the wrong option and selecting the correct option so If you're going to ask me a question is it possible to clear CSIR net examination in life sciences I'm definitely going to say yes if strategically approached So today I was talking about CSIR net examination entire details why you have to write the CSIR net examination what is the CSIR net examination how is the CSIR net examination easy tough or what's the pattern of this examination when is the CSIR net examination is going to be conducted and what are the reference book is it possible for you to clear everything in detail so i believe that this video is helpful for all of you if you really like this video please like share and subscribe to our channel biotechnica thank you all of you